What's up, everybody? Out of Pal 78 coming back at you. People don't understand. For my second video, I am not going to be doing the actual views yet. We'll be setting up the models and we'll be setting up the connection to the database and we'll be setting up uh, our folder structures. So here we go, right here. Let's come back to our solutions in Visual Studio. We're going to click on Wedding Planner right here and we're going to right click on it and we're going to put add and then new folder <clears throat> and then this new folder is going to be called DTOs we'll be working with those at the end of the video to show how to make one of those so we're not worried about that right now another folder we're going to need is a context folder and that's going to be very important because that's help going to help us connect to the database or that's going to connect our information and create the tables in our database so we're going to call this content oops some people call this data some people call it context i like to call it context so i know what the hell i'm looking at so um we will add a file in here and it's a regular class and we were going to call this wedding context and then you press enter and then it's going to add the cs at the end you don't have to have that cs unless you're doing something like we're going to be doing when we start getting to the views so right now the wedding context has nothing so let's leave it like that and let's start making our models. Our models are very important and our app settings.json is gonna be important. Let's look at that. This is where we connect the connection string and our programs.cs is where we're gonna uh, make the builders for what we need. One of the builder stuff that we're gonna need and I'll do this one right now is we're gonna put um, use session or add session. Services add session and we're going to use that for with login in the um and the registration to keep you logged in there but when we put something up there we got to put it down here when it comes to a certain elements so you press tab a couple of times and this is why i love about visual studio 22 2022 is this right here that it has a lot of like i know what you kind of want here just press tab save yourself some copper tunnel and my boy Sir Rob used to say. Now, as you can see, in the old MVC projects that we made, we had a startup. There's no startup. Everything gets done in here now. So it makes it a little bit easier by condensing stuff. And there's a lot of things in the background, um, especially when you start using Blazor, that it'll do on its own. And it's crazy. I love it. So that's kind of taken care of. And now we got to actually start creating these models. So in the models, we're going to right-click on the folder, and we're going to add class and the first one is going to be um user or we could call it planner planner could be a user all right no i'm just going to leave it as user because it makes it easiest it makes more sense for us to just call it user since because yeah, sometimes you don't have to plan to log in you just need to you, you could see all the weddings that are there but you don't have to actually create a wedding so you can't be a planner so we just keep it as user and we're going to add that model we're going to right click again we're going to add another model this is called the wedding model and we're just going to type in wedding and this is for all the um weddings that are going to be created you know like i could create a many weddings and you could attend many weddings so the user and weddings we're going to separate uh, another one we're going to create and this is not going to go in the database this is going to be called the um the login model and it's simply for logging in it's going to make our lives easier this way and you'll see in a few and some of this stuff is actually going to be reusable um as far as the models the content inside the models and you'll see that in a second and the last one we're going to create is going to be called the rsvp that's what i'm going to call it <clears throat> like that we just go like that because an employer in the database, which this would be in, would be RSVPs with a lowercase s. And then we're going to add those. These are all our, what they call it, all our models that we're going to be using for this. Now, for every model, you need a key. All right. So we're going to type in the word key and you're going to see you go red because we need to put the data annotations in. So you click enter, it adds that. And then of course it's gonna be required. We're not need we gonna require because it's it's uh, public anyway, and it's a key. Now most first keys is gonna be ID, but I like to name it RSVP ID because then I get confused of which ID I'm looking for sometimes. 
And so I'm gonna save this model as it is for now. This is all we need to start connecting stuff to the database, okay? And this model, same thing with the wedding planner. We're gonna do one model at a time and then we're gonna add different migrations for each model we finish creating. So we're gonna put the word key in here as well. And it's gonna know what's going on. So you, oh, I didn't do that. Key and then control period and then enter. And this is, it does the same thing for every single one of them as you can see. And what are we in? We're in the wedding. So I like to call it, uh, we call it wed ID. So for wedding ID, it makes sense, but we're not gonna complete this ID yet. The login ID, the login one does not need an ID at all because it's not gonna be inside the database. We're using the login model to log into our website, you know, and it's gonna be easier. So let's start with the user. The user one is gonna usually have the most in it, um, usually. So we're gonna put key again here. Control dot, everybody knows that. We press enter and tab, and I'm gonna put user ID so we know what we're talking about. And then we're gonna come down and we're gonna use this required tab. Now this required tab is gonna be for the first name. So let's go and look at what we're doing. The first thing we're definitely gonna need, and sometimes we gotta think outside the box, okay? So the first thing we, the first, what, three, five, um, what they call it, the first five tables or the first five columns in the table that we're gonna need are these. And that's what the model actually is. It's actually the table that's gonna go into your database. And that's why we create models. The login model is not gonna go into our database, it's just gonna ask to see if something matches inside the database. That's why it doesn't need to be um, replicated in the database. So first name, last name, email, password, confirm password. So let's make our life easier and let's, Go to let's just do the, this like this first name, last name, and I know people are like that's the long way of doing it, but this this is an easy way actually to do it. And we could do email like capital E um M because you know email E E dash mail stands for electronic mail. What is it? <clears throat> password, and we're gonna have confirm password, and I'm just gonna put P W. <clears throat> and you're gonna see it's gonna compare to that. So those are the, the five things we need according to that picture. But but what happens if you want to create a wedding? So we need a wedding. So my weddings, let's call it um my weddings like that. I am not great at naming conventions. So what else do you think we might need? Um, some RSVPs. So we call it a goers. But we're gonna need um this is this these are actually kind of easy. And there's three of them that's not gonna, these are, these are the ones on the bottom are not gonna need this required data annotation saying that, hey, make a requirement for this because this is automatically gonna be put in there. So let's get to the first one and we could copy and paste some of this stuff. So we're gonna go public and we're gonna go um, string here. <clears throat> and because it's a string, we wanna put this question mark here. And then we're gonna press end over here and we're gonna go to press tab and that's basically what we need. But I feel we're gonna need some more data annotations. Now we could go like we I used to do and keep going down and down and down, but that's not a good way of doing it anymore. So let's come over here and let's put a comma. And now we could do more data annotations. We got a min a minimum length of one. And the reason we want a minimum length is because they have to have something in there. But I say one because I actually have a friend that was in the Marine Corps with me whose name is the first letter J. That's it, this is the letter J. That's his first name, so parents are smart. So we also want a max length. And one of the reasons we want a max length, one, we don't want to store too much. Um, I put 50 all the time. We don't want to store too much. And also, if we don't put a max length, what happens is it's going to be called a, a N var char. So, and what that means is you're going to have a max nav char, um, var char, right, uh, variable characters. A variable of characters and what's gonna happen it's it's gonna be like gigabytes of information in there if they are max length if we try to scale this up it'll just it won't scale up it'll just break the code <clears throat> we could also put a display and then you need the name right here and what this is for is when you go to the front end you don't have to write display name first name because it's gonna do it right here this is what it's for bam done for the most part 
This is excellent for what we're going to need it for for most of these. So let's do this for the last name as well. Control C for copy. And put this above here. And all that's the same. And we're going to put the public string right here. I mean this right here. And then we're also going to come to the end and put the get. And it's going to give us that automatically. I didn't get that on Visual Studio 2019. So that's great. So let's make a space here so you can see. All right. We got the last name. We want to change this to last. Okay. So that's all the data annotations we should need. And but for the last name, we're gonna have to have at least uh, two letters in the last name because you know TY is some people's last name that I meant. So let's do the same thing with this. And I'm also gonna show you how to look online to get a, a regular expression or regex for the email. So we're also gonna put data type here. Data type. You gotta put um, data type again and then dot email address and then we close it and then we put email address right here and what this is like it's kind of like the formatting however with this which um kind of is frustrating you put this in there and then you still have you still could go with albert at and that's all you need albert at something any three letters or any two letters and it'll be albert at ga and that's it you don't have to put the dot com so that's why i'm going to use a regular expression and Let's see these. MVC email regular. Uh, we can put regex like that. That's what it stands for. As you can see, I looked at this before. Um, and this guy has saying that invalid email address. I try to use this. However, you know the thing is that you don't have to put error messages with this data annotations. It's gonna say that already for you. You don't need the error message itself. The problem with this is that this email one works fine. So you just put regular expression. And now this is going to say you need an at sign and you need a um, dot com. So, and the thing is when you put the data type in the front end, when you put like, you know, this is an email, well, that, that don't always work either. And because this is to something totally different, I'm going to break it down like this. And as, as you could see, it has, you could use these characters. You can't use like special characters. It's telling you that here. And I, I really, I'm not good at regular expressions, but somewhere around here, you'll see like an at sign and that'll be, you have to have an at sign with at least three letters right here. That's what that's saying. Three characters, <clears throat> zero to nine ABC. Um, and after the dot, you have to have um, at least 10 characters, nine characters. Um, no, you could use zero to nine. You have to have at least three characters like dot net, dot biz. And I would like to put this to four because you got dot info now, but I'm not gonna do that right now. We'll worry about that later. Public string and the question marks are for like an MVC six dot net six. You can't have this regular and we're gonna be using SQL server, not MySQL server or MySQL server. And And that's very important because I see I put that and everybody said that's very important because it's different and you, it doesn't want you to have this. It'll mess up your code if you have that. So this one's going to be kind of similar to, you know, this right here. And some people like to break it up instead of seeing this fly all the way across. They like to break it up with different um, stuff like that and add stuff in there. So we'll put this in here. We want a, a min length of one. No, our passwords have to be a minimum length of eight according to the picture, correct? See, according to this picture, your password must be at least eight characters long. And you must confirm, must, and the password confirm must match. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple. So this requirement is required, a minimum length of eight, a data type of password, and we get rid of the email address stuff right here. And we want the max link to be like, 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 2000 because we're gonna um what we're gonna do with this we're gonna actually you know we're gonna actually make it so we're gonna hash it so when we hash it that means we're gonna make it more secured so you won't see our regular email address it'll be a secure email address that's why we're doing this like that and this is a password right okay that's that so we're gonna delete this space here a space underneath there and public string again 
and question mark and then we go to N and we'll do this and it'll do that. So we're gonna do kind of something similar. We don't need a min and we don't need a max length. So let's get that out the way. And I'm going to show you how to compare this. We don't need email address. The reason we don't need a max length or anything like that is because we're going to put this new data annotation. We'll put it in the bottom. We'll put it underneath it. And this one's totally different. This is um, not map. So it needs the schema. I'm going to type like that. Control period. And it's going to put the data annotation schema. And that's the same. Do not put this in the database. We don't need the same thing twice in the database. That's just ridiculous. So the schema says do not put that in the past in the um, database just compare it on the outside so we're going to put this to confirm password right right just don't forget can't type all right and we don't want it to be email type we want it to be password <clears throat> and what this is going to do for us this is saying you know when the beginning when in the front instead of having showing your password you see nothing but that that's basically what it's going to do for us without us doing it. That's all That's all we need to do. So one more thing we actually need to do is compare. We type in compare and we put the word password. Now with all of these, let's see what's going on here. Fix formatting. Right, look, so usually you don't have to worry about this, but in here it makes it seem like you have to worry about it. Um, all right, don't worry, it, it's gonna fix it when we fix this part. Okay, when we fix this part, it'll fix it. So let's just do that now. Um, but I don't think we, we, we should, it doesn't matter if it's blank or not, because if it's blank, it's required, and then that, and that should fix that. And of course, it doesn't, but let's see, compare password. Let's do this real quick, control save. And let's make sure we typed in password properly in here, the same way we typed it there. And we did. We could put this error message right here. We would have to type um, error message, of course. And then like that, and then that would make it disappear. But the funny thing is, I used it before without the error message. Yeah, and it's gonna make its own error message, so we're good. Now, to get rid of this warning, we just put a question mark right there. That says it kind of can be nullable, but I don't want it to be nullable because it's required. So with MySQL Server, this wouldn't happen, but it happens here. Okay, a, a couple of more um, variables we want to create is, one, one of them is going to be created on, right? And the other one is going to be updated on. Those are going to be a little bit different. So let's go to here. We want a public list of weddings. That's not how you spell list, but let's type in wedding, right? And just because it's in the same um, model folder, we don't have to worry about bringing it in. My weddings tab, and that's fixed. We got public list of um, RSVP, right? There you go. And here we go. What? There you go. I tabbed too fast. Now with these, you're also going to have a, you can put the question mark to get rid of the warnings. <clears throat> but the last one is going to be a date. So these are public. You know what? Let's make this easier for ourselves. If you hold control and alt in this and then press right here, it gives you two lines. So you go public. Um, Date, oops, you gotta put date time, right? It's gonna get this get and set as well. Oops. And then at the end, we're gonna put date time. See, it already knows what we want. So we can literally just copy and paste this. And that will be our model for, oh man, Alt Shift F, and that'll, um, what they call it, that'll, that will make it cleaner looking. Now, I used, I was doing this, and I would put like, Minimum length right underneath each other, but that's not what you want. So this is the user model. So before we could create this in the database or even show migrations, we're gonna have to get some extensions on the NuGet package manager. Before we go there, let's go to our weddings context. 
this is actually going to bring a NuGet package that we don't have to bring in. We're going to put the colon and DB context right here. Context like that. And if you press control dot, and see where it says install Microsoft Intentity Framework Core, find and install the latest version, it's going to install it. Now, we originally didn't have it inside the dependencies in this package, and it just installed the package. So that's what that is right there. Can't make it bigger right now. So 6.0. We're also going to need the SQL Server one, and sometimes it doesn't work the same way. So we're going to go to um, Tools, NuGet Manager, Manager NuGet Packages, and we're going to actually install the stuff we need. Now, one of the stuff we're going to need is going to be Entity Framework. Framework. And let's just enter that so we can find everything we need. We just put that in, so we don't need that anymore. We don't need Design. Um, it'll, you know, it'll come with some of these other pro um, stuff that we're putting in. So we definitely need the SQL Server because we're using SQL Server. And then we're going to need tools as well. Now, we don't no longer need identity because it's going to be inside some of these packages. So we press accept here and we go to tools and we're going to install that and we're going to do the acceptance of all that stuff. So they got all these things in there. So if you look at these frameworks as they get put into our system, Let's get out of here real quick. That should be everything we need. We might need one more thing. We'll figure it out. But the framework comes with all these abstractions, analyzers, all these dependency injections that we're going to be using. Um, and those are the other packages that come with just the framework core. The framework core SQL Server comes with assemblies, clients, and the relational one that, so we don't need to add extra ones we don't need. And this one comes with the design. And the designs comes with relational and some of these other ones that we use, but we won't talk about too much in, um, you know. So, what does DB context? Let's see if we can get everything perfect. All right. In the DB context, we're gonna need what we call a constructor. So we type in CTR, tab, tab. In the constructor, we're gonna need um, to put database context right here, and we're gonna put options like this this is actually the common way of doing this the most um common way to do these things this is going to be wedding context and then in here we're going to have options it, should, it already knows so we come over here press space and look it already gives me what i need uh, the one thing we don't need we don't need it to take up so much space because we're not going to do nothing fancy with it at this time so we're going to save this we're gonna press enter right here a couple of times. And we're gonna to go to DB set. All right, we just press tab because I did it wrong. And we're gonna put user. I don't know. We're gonna just put, type in user. And we gotta press control dot because we gotta bring in the models folder. And we could just put um, users like that. That's fine. And press tab tab and it gets it. And, and then we're gonna see this uh, non nullable properties and all that good stuff. We don't have to worry about that. None of that stuff is going to be non nullable But we do have to put public in front of this. Last time I did that, um, it didn't go well. And then we're going to put another DB set right here, you know. And then we're going to put um, wedding. And then we're going to put whatever it gives us. Wedding sounds good. I like to capitalize on mine, so let's capitalize that. And put a space bar and tab. And the same thing is going to happen here. Public DB set. Set, uh, DB set, and we're gonna put our SVP right there. You go, that sounds perfect. And we don't need to do this part, there's no reason for that part. So, we're gonna put a space like an enter to make more space to look more um, readable. And that goes, that's all I need for that. I am not gonna mess with this right here, we're not worried about that yet. Okay, so that's taken care of, and this is all we should need for the wedding context gonna delete that I'm gonna delete it we're gonna close it out we got the app settings .json. now I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do this we're gonna put um stop typing connection strings it gives us everything we need in here <clears throat> I just like to type DB info like this press tab tab this right here it gives me the string I need to have well remember I said I was gonna show you how to Look up some of these strings and how to, you know, see what we're doing. Here you go. Here's one way. And then I'm going to show you another way to do it in here to make sure I got everything in here. 
So this is the, uh, the best way to do it at this time. And this is not what we need. This is because I had it here before. So it's showing you all the old stuff that I have that I renamed it the same way. So we're going to go here. We're going to go to um, this MVC server. There's nothing in that MVC server. So let's press enter and connect. It's going to connect. And you see there's no database, nothing inside here. But we was able to connect. That's the biggest thing I was worried about. So I don't have to worry about it no more. So we, mi we minimize that. You go to this explorer. Now what's our servers? Because this is here and it's already here, I'm going to disconnect, but I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to delete it because that's from the old stuff. For some reason, it never really truly got gets deleted. And I deleted almost everything on this computer that said .NET or anything. So we're gonna add a different connection and the name of your computer. It doesn't matter if it's all uppercase or not. That's my nickname, so that's um, the name of my computer. Now that this server's in here, and it has exactly what you saw before, it wasn't the right one from before. So I'm gonna come to, um, let, me, let me get that out of there. I'm going to um, put the volume on that down. And then I'm going to go to my view in SQL Server Object Explorer. Okay, and of course it's not showing me that. Okay, it is showing me that. But we want to um, have it like that. I don't really care for this project one, so I am going to disconnect from that one. And I'm going to add an SQL server. So we kind of like know the name of it. And this is, let's see, let's go to properties. And then you see the name right here. This is the server name. So that's what you have to put right here. Control C. And now we could exit that. We don't need to borrow that no more. But press Control V. And that's my MVC server. Default, everything like that. We press enter here. As you can see, this came back. I don't know why, but there's no database in it yet. So the reason I'm showing you that is because when you click on here and you go to general. This is your string that you need to connect to, right? Let's press Control A. Let's bring this over more. So you can see that it says connection string right here. And if you just click on it, press Control A and C, you could bring that over here. Now the cool thing is, we're not gonna need all this stuff that's in it. So this is wrong, I don't care about that. Um, the security true, yes. So on this, this is what our database is going to be. This is mine. Yours will be something else. We also need a database. And we could also call it initial catalog. That's one way of calling it. And we could call it um, wedding. Hold on. Wedding. Wedding DB for database. And we press the semicolon inside the string. And that will be the name of the database. So we're going to control save this for now. We should be done with this. We just need integrate integrate it security true. We needed the source to be beat those desktop the MVC server. Now I know it's only one line, but let me explain something. If you don't put the second line in, this this line if you put one backslash for um, C sharp, it means that it's a um, it cuts you out of the line. Like it's a uh, what they call that. I'll show. I'll just show you. So it'll show you invalid escape is an escape sequence. So if you put like lowercase n. And that means start that on the next line. So the back, the second one actually says, just use this line. I just want to use this um, character. So that's what we're doing. So let's press Control S on that so I don't forget. And now we, what we got to go to is the program CS. This is something that I do get sometimes confused on. So forgive me if I do it wrong. Now this dot don't belong there, of course. And we're going to go to Builder. You got to spell Builder right. Services. We don't have to add MVC. It already knows that. Okay, Builder Services. Um, what am I doing? Um, let me see. Oh, DB Context. That's right. Add DB Context. This one right here. And the DB Context is going to be Wedding Context right here. You're going to bring that in down so we could bring that in. And now in here, let me see. We're going to go to options. And then in the options, 
Yeah, options, use SQL Server. And then we we'll come down here, and I'm going to put the semicolon at the end, so okay, I hate getting those. And it doesn't know what SQL Server is, so we press Control dot even though you just saw it knew, what <laughs> it knew what SQL Server was, it just didn't put it in for us. So we're going to use the SQL Server uh, right here. And then this should be uh, builder.configuration, I believe it is, dot, uh, get connection strings. All right, and the connection string is going to be inside there. I believe it needs that too. What the hell? And let's go to the end of that. And I believe, no, it doesn't need that. So let's go to the end of that. And in here, we're going to get um, DB info. That's it. That's the connection string we're looking for. All shift F. This looks like it should work. Um, only one way to find out. There's no errors, there's crazy warnings. So this is the context we want. These are the options to use the SQL Server. And if, as you saw, it already knew what we wanted to do, but then it's like, yo, you know I'm Shane. I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, um, add me. <laughs> and now we should be able to connect to the database and connect our models to the database. So I'm gonna do one migration. Let's see how many minutes I've been doing this for. 31 minutes. So this is going to be um, the end of this video after I, I do the first migration. And this, and we're going to call them all something different now. I go to Tools, and I go to um, New Get. Come on. And I go to Package Manager Console, like most people do, of course. This is the background for that. We're going to change that, maybe. Um, and then we're going to um, add a migration. I don't know why my caps is on, but add migration. Some people like to put the capital A, capital M, it doesn't make a difference. And we're gonna call this user model. And we're gonna add every model after this video. The next few videos, we'll add the different models. We'll add all the stuff that goes in the model. So hopefully this works. Hopefully we don't see no red there. And um, yeah, so, because some, because you do need to sometimes have different things. Now, if yours doesn't say all the stuff that mine says, that's fine. It doesn't have to. Matter of fact, most of the time it don't. I don't know why I set it up this way, but I forgot how to take it off this way. But when you go, you see what happened. It added this migration. It added our um, foreign keys and saying, oh, these tables, that's all they're going to have. So in order to save that to the database, though, you got to put uh, update database. This is saying, like, yo, this is how we want to make our tables right now. Let's update our database. Okay. And now we're gonna hopefully this works. And once if this works, then we'll be good to go. And sometimes you see everything working, and you see everything red, and you're like, "What?" Well, that works. So as you can see right here, let's refresh this. We now have a database called Wedding Database, and we should have three tables or four tables: the uh, migration table, the uh, obvious VPs, whatever VRs, whatever they put. So did I name it wrong? No, I didn't. So that's fine. I don't care if that's the name of it. But you know what this is. These are all our three columns. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do for this video. So uh, hopefully you guys got some knowledge out of this. But let me show you something real quick for this video. It's up here. You see it says N. Um, I forgot what the N stands for, but variable of characters. If it's, like I said, if you put let it go max, what happens? It, um, it, it gets too big. And then you could, when you're trying to scale it to a bigger, something bigger, unlike this one. It, it could like crush it and mess it all up. We'll get into this next video. We're gonna, cause we're gonna do the other models.